All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Disc Golf Weekly. And today, August 9th, kicks off the 2016 PDGA World Championships. Um, I don't know about you guys, but Worlds is always one of my favorite tournaments of the year. Uh, maybe just because it goes on for an entire week. Uh, maybe it's because we get the, the crowning of the world champion for that whole year. Um, I don't know. Something about it. I always just I always get super amped up for Worlds. I'm always really excited for it. Um, especially this year. Um, the last four years, as we all know, has just been dominated by Paul Macbeth. He's the four-time world champion, four years in a row, going for his fifth in a row this year. But as we all know, he's kind of been slumping a little bit this year. Um, and Ricky Wysocki, the person who's basically just been living in his shadow the last four years, um, and no offense to Ricky by that, um, I just mean that he's you know, he's always been the second best. He's always kind of been Paul's bridesmaid, if you will, um, for the last four years, where Paul has been the dominant player. Ricky's been the one who's just been right there, right at his heels, uh, just pushing him and pushing him and always right there. Um, and this year now with Paul slumping or struggling or however you want to say it, um, this year Ricky has really been taking advantage of that. And Ricky's been the one that's been dominating the series uh, the the tour and all the different tours and series and all that kind of stuff um, this year in 2016 uh, and so for this year uh, for this world I just want to do a little bit of a preview for it kind of give you guys um, some stats and stuff like that uh, and kind of give you my take on who I think is going to win um, so pretty much you know it's not a guarantee that Paul or Ricky are going to win uh, but clearly these two are they have to be the favorites going into it. You know, Ricky's been the, the dominant player this year. Paul is the four-time defending champion. Uh, you have to put these two at the top. They're probably one and two in the world. Um, or, uh, definitely, I would say. Ricky's definitely number one, in my opinion, right now. Because, uh, because Paul has been so good for so long, I would still put him at number two. It's debatable whether some other people may or may not be having a better year than him this year. Um... But just to kind of throw out some stats about the two, the two combined, Paul and Ricky, have won 25 of the last 32 NTs over the last five years. Uh, that's almost 80%. So that's almost four out of every five NTs, Paul or Ricky is winning it. Um, so clearly they're the top two. Uh, Paul is rated currently at 1054. Ricky is rated at 1048. And the next highest person is Nico at 10.32. Uh, so that's a huge difference between those two and everyone else. Um, sometimes people say uh, one stroke is about 7 to 10 rating points. So that means Ricky and Paul are on average 1 to 3 strokes better than the third best person in the world. Um, so yeah, just kind of showing how dominant these two have been over the last, you know, year, year and a half, two years, however long you want to go back. Um, so their their average finish in 2016, um, for Paul, his average finish is uh, 3.4 or third, if you want to call it that. Um, and Ricky's average finish in 2016 is a 1.7. Um, and how I got that, I just added up their total finish from every tournament. So first is one, second is second, twelfth is twelfth. Um, and then just divided it by the number of tournaments to get their average finish. Um, that's for the whole year, so if you want um, a more accurate, more current, um, their average finish since June, Paul's average finish is 6th, and that's in only 5 events. Ricky's average finish since June is 1.5 in 9 events. So Ricky's played more events, and his average finish has actually gotten better than his average for the entire year, while Paul's in 5 events, which is less, but that's fine, he doesn't usually play a whole lot. He usually just tries to keep uh, keep his schedule around the big tournaments and keep his body healthy. Um, but recently, his average finish for the year has gotten worse by almost 200%. His average finish for the year is, you know, 3.4, so third, fourth, however you want to call it. Um, and his average finish since June is the sixth place, uh, which is very un-Paul McBeth-like of, as of late. Um, if you want to look at their NT points, um, Paul has 442.5, Ricky has 481. Um, 
Paul played in one less NT than Ricky. Ricky's total for all NTs is 563, but uh, the PDGA doesn't count everything. I think they only take your top five NTs. Um, and so with Ricky playing in sixth and Paul only playing in five, the number to compare is Paul's 442.5 to Ricky's 481. Um, Paul hasn't won an NT since the Memorial, which was actually March. Uh, and Ricky lost the Vibram, and he lost, uh, which was just a couple of weeks ago, and then his last NT loss before that was actually glass blown open, uh, which was at the end of April. And he came in second by one stroke, same with Paul. They both tied. Uh, but Ricky went on to win NTs after that. Meanwhile, Paul hasn't won an NT since the beginning of March, which, again, is very un-Paul McBeth-like. Um, and as I was saying before about Paul's average finish really dropping off since June, um, his last two tournaments, actually, he's finished both in 12th place. Um, and now, for a normal professional, that would be pretty respectable. 12th place in the world is pretty good. Um, but the last time, for Paul at least, the last time that he finished in 12th place or worse, not counting these two tournaments, was actually Beaver State Fling in 2013. So it's been over three years since he finished in 12th place or worse in one tournament, and he's done that in his last two now. Um, and if you want to find the last time he's finished in 12th place or worse in back-to-back -back tournaments, you have to actually go all the way back to 2011, which was five years ago. Um, so that's, I mean, big, big drop-off for Paul there. Whether it's mental, physical, whatever, that's a completely different video that I'm not going to make because I have no idea. The fact of the matter is he finished in 12th for his last two tournaments. The last time he's done that was five years ago. The last time he finished in 12th in a single tournament was Beaver State Fling 2013, which was over three years ago. And now I don't want this to come off as a really pro-Ricky, um, anti-Paul video, uh, because there are positives for Paul going into this, and there are negatives for Ricky going into this. Um, positives for Paul, he's still the highest rated player. He's still rated 1054. No one else has ever broken the 1050 barrier. He's slumping and still above that 1050 barrier. Um, so while he's not playing his best, while he's not playing as well as he could and has in the past, he's still the best that we've ever seen. Uh, there's no one else that's been to that level of play. Um, the World Championships, um, it's taking place in Emporia, Kansas. Paul always plays well at the Glassblown Open. Uh, he, he always plays well on those tournaments, um, on those courses, I should say, in that tournament. Um, and I think that does come into come into play because everyone knows these courses already. Everyone's played on these courses for years and years and years. Um, so they they know how to how to play this course, um, or these courses, I should say. There's not going to be that uh, going to the course a week ahead of time or two weeks and learning it factor. Everybody knows it. Everybody's played there. And historically, Paul plays well in Emporia. Um, and he's got that been there, done that mentality. Like I said in the beginning... He's the four-time defending, reigning, whatever, champion. There hasn't been another Disc Golf World Champion since 2011. That was five years ago. Paul's been there. He's won World Championships. He's won them in really close, really tight playoff sudden-death battles like 2014 in Portland against Ricky. And he's gone out there and absolutely dominated the field like he did last year in Pittsburgh, where he went into the final nine with like a 12-stroke lead or something like that. So he's been there. He's done that. He's proved that he can handle the pressure. He's proved that he can put together an entire week's worth of solid golf and win the world championships. Ricky, on the other hand, has not only, you know, maybe so he plays well in Emporia, Sure, he's Ricky. He plays well everywhere. But he's never actually won a tournament in Emporia, Kansas. He's never won a glass blown open. Uh, he's never won any tournaments that are there. Um, not only has he never won in Emporia, he's never won a world title. And I think that sort of like a LeBron James thing, you know, does it get to a point where he's been so close so many times and he's so good, does it get to a point where he starts to doubt himself? 
Um, he start, you know, that doubt starts to build up. Am I good enough? Can I handle this? And he starts putting more pressure on himself than there already is. Being the world championships, being the top rated player this year, being the guy that everyone is expecting to win. Can he handle all that pressure? Um, and while well, yes, he's handled pressure in the past and he's won big tournaments in the past, clearly, um, he's never won a world championship and it's at a different level. Um, the world championships and maybe USDGC are kind of a step above any other tournament. You know, sure, it'd be cool to say you're the memorial champion, but having being able to say that you're the world champion is different. Um, and, and I think every player would agree that being the world champion would be better than being the United States champion or the European champion or whatever, because you're the world champion. That's the best players in the world, and you beat all of them. Um, so that's a lot of pressure for Ricky. Um, can he handle it? Will it get to him and maybe he'll fall apart? I have no idea. That's why this is so exciting. Um, and, and so, like I said, Paul historically plays well in Emporia. Ricky maybe plays well, play, maybe he doesn't, doesn't matter. He's never actually won. We're going to go back the the past five Glassblown Open. So back to 2012, since Paul won his first world title. 2012 Glassblown Open, Paul finished second. Ricky finished 10th. 2013 Glassblown Open, Paul finished second. Ricky finished 14th. 2014 Glassblown Open, Paul again finished second. And Ricky finished 8th. 2015, Paul won the tournament. Ricky finished in 10th. In 2016, this year, both of them tied for second, one stroke off of the lead, who was Cam Todd. Um, so in the past five years, the worst Paul has done at the Glassblown Open is second place. The best Ricky has done is second place, and he only has one other finish inside the top ten in five years, and that was in eighth place in 2014. Now that doesn't mean that, you know, Paul is guaranteed to win, and Ricky is going to finish, you know, maybe inside the top ten, but looking at the last five years, probably not. That's not what that means at all. It's just showing that, yes, Paul plays well in Emporia. Ricky hasn't in the past. If you want to look at just this year, both of them tied the exact same tournament, exact same conditions with the exact same score. So what does that mean? Absolutely nothing. I don't know. Those are just the facts. Um... So clearly this year, 2016, it's Ricky's year. It belongs to him. Paul is, for whatever reason, struggling, and it seems to have gotten worse over the last month since June. Uh, Ricky's taking absolutely full advantage of that and capitalizing uh, on Paul's struggles. Uh, so, so with all that information, Ricky has to be the favorite heading into Worlds. I know Paul is the four-time champion. Everyone is probably still expecting him to win, but I think if you were a betting man, the safe money, you would have to bet it on Ricky. Uh, but we all know it's no guarantee until the final putt is in that, you know, someone has won or someone has lost. Uh, if there's anyone that you can't count out in a single tournament, it has to be Paul at World Championships. Uh, in 2014, Paul made up six strokes in the final 12 holes to force a playoff that he went on to win against Ricky, uh, which I think does matter. Um, maybe... Not only does Ricky have the pressure of he's never won the world championships, he's also got Paul to beat. If it comes down to it, you know, does he is he going to doubt himself that you know maybe maybe I can win a world championships, but I don't know if I can beat Paul. Um, it's just more pressure. Will that get to him? Will it not? I have no idea. That's why we have to wait for this to play out and see. Um, Paul also dominated the competition in 2015. He had a 12-stroke lead going into the final nine. So he's shown he can win the tight battles at the World Championships, and he can absolutely blow people out of the water for a week consistently. Ricky hasn't done either of those things yet, which I think does matter. Uh, but with all of that being said, for the 2016 World Championships, uh, my pick is going to be Ricky Wysocki. I think Ricky's finally going to be able to put it all together. I think he's going to dethrone the beast. Uh, I think he's going to do it. Would I be surprised if Paul wins? Absolutely not. Would I be surprised if someone else wins? Honestly, yeah, I would. It's not impossible, but what do I think is more likely? Paul or Ricky putting together a solid week of golf or 
someone like Nate Sexton or Jeremy Colin or Paul Ulibarri, who's absolutely capable of doing it. I just think it's more likely that Paul or Ricky is going to do it. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts on it, guys. Uh, kind of got a little bit rambly there. I just, I'm just i super excited for Worlds. It's starting today. I'm really happy for it. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for a really, really long time. I wish I could have been there helping out, filming, doing all this kind of stuff, getting to meet you guys. Um, but unfortunately, I can't. Life kind of gets in the way sometimes. So let me know who you guys think is going to win Worlds. Um, do you guys like this kind of video where I just sort of ramble about stuff? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm also very tired. I just got done with work. So I am going to stop this video. I'm going to post it. And I'm going to go to sleep. So I can't wait, guys. Get ready. Get your disc golf watching pants on because this is going to be a good one. All right, guys. Until next time, go get out and throw.